deal is that you go to graduate school and then you teach four years at a school and so I did that and I happened to I selected the school that I did because I knew that the one of my teachers was the vice principal there and he was an amazing um, educator so I decided to go to school there while I was there and I wrote many things I kept a blog there you go. Um, Take a look. Uh, no Child Left Behind, apparently in a well-staffed classroom. No Child Left Behind came down the pike, um, and there were a lot of things that were just really unbearable. Um, that made me angry in dealing with the kids, it made me angry in dealing with the adults. Um, we had a population of students who were, we were pretty much um, many students of color, students coming from um, different parts in Africa, El Salvador, Southeast Asia. The only thing was that um, the curriculum didn't really serve their needs, mm -hmm. I felt. I mean, we were still reading books about, that I read, right. and that had been read for hundreds of years, it seemed. Literally, because we did the Odyssey, and um, yeah. a lot of the kids had learned this Montgomery County whole language approach, mm -hmm. which is not a good approach. They assume that you'll learn the words based on the context in which they're in. Mm. And so some of their readings that they got tested on would have, you know, this family flew on the Concord and kids, and we weren't allowed to help them, ask what the Concord was. Because a lot of our kids, thank you, where were they? Uh, behind the brush. They were, um, when you talked about the uh, socioeconomics of what was going on in the school, mm -hmm. a lot of those kids had no idea what the Concord was. Right. I only know because of reading. I've never been on the Concord. The Concord doesn't exist no, anymore. So you had kids that were trying to answer these questions based on right. things that were not only out of their element, but out of anything that anybody they'd known really had ever gone through. We had kids, I had a kid that we'd been through uh, the war in Libya and seen uh, people get murdered in front of her. And I was like, you know, we're not meeting these kids' needs. And if we're just going to teach them Lord of the Flies, but we're not gonna meet some of their other needs, I think that that's a problem. Um, and then I think, to some extent, I probably became a problem. <laughs> um, and the kids liked me. It was, it, was, it was definitely a school where, you know, Teachers got threatened, um, you know, kids were in and out of jail, um, kids had those little low jacks on them. I mean, okay, they're not called low jacks, but you know, I told one of my kids, you need to come after school for help, because you've missed a lot, a large part of the Odyssey, and he was like, um, yeah, I can't, and I was like, no, yeah, you have to, otherwise you're not going to understand the Odyssey, because I barely understand the Odyssey, you have to really work at it. And he lifted up his pant legs, and he was like, no, I can't stay after school, because I need to be home. I'm on house arrest, so if I'm not. So that, in addition to something really backwards and awful that happened at the school, um, I left. Um, and so, and I ended up teaching at a private school, and they have their own issues dealing with diversity and all that stuff. So, um, but I love teaching, so I wanted to figure out a way where I could still teach, still work with kids and um, and adults, and be creative and um, teach what I want to teach. And, and part of that is teaching about South Africa, Black Panther movement, um, teaching about social justice, um, te teaching English, um, but you know, using hip hop to do it, which I did a lot of. That's why I, you know, brought in my third bass or Don Newkirk. Don Newkirk. And, and right. the kids were like, there are no metaphors in hip hop. And I was like, all that it's all metaphors or all similes. The whole right. thing is figurative language. Right. And they're like, no, it's not. And I 